not the cracker version. That wasn't a cracker version. That was Adobe Gray. Uh, listen, as I was this week just hearing it, it's amazing. And this is where I hopefully, through my walk-up songs and through the way the Lord, we see things secular and we attach it to the world. Why? We can have a different perspective. If you listen to that song, through the rain, I'm feeling like I'm not getting it. What am I doing? And you say, give me the beat boys that freed my soul. I want to get lost in the rock and roll. And you're like, what's the rock and roll guy? Listen, you can really change that out. Give me the disciples and the prophets and all the people that went before me that freed my soul because I want to be lost in their praise and their rock and roll. We, we sometimes call it rock and roll praise. And so, listen, here's the fact. God wants us to see things through his eyes, through his perspective. So I thought about that. We are supposed to, and here's the title of today's sermon, Give me the people. We're supposed to be His people. Not know His people. Not attend church with His people. Let the pastor be His people. Let the deacons and the elders and whoever leads the church and those that are teaching and the praise team be the people. I always love that we talk about praise teams quite often. And praise team, listen, here's the deal. They're supposed to be leading you in your praise and worship. You ever heard a praise song and you're like, I ain't feeling it. And then all of a sudden there's nothing and you feel it. I mean, there's supposed to, you're supposed to be in your praise. We as his people need to be his people. The entire Old Testament is about God's chosen people. Whether you believe it has any um, pertinence to us, it does. Because if God says it and tells us to do it, you might want to listen. But it's really directed towards his people. And those are people that he chose. Through Jesus Christ, he still directs it to the people that he chose through his son, Jesus Christ. When you talk about well, how you're forever saved, or you're talking about God chose everyone that chooses his son. He will never go against that. Ten people in a row, they all choose Jesus, he's going to take all ten. Well, number 11 is a really, really bad dude, and he chose Jesus on his deathbed, and he didn't get to be baptized. He chose those who chose his son, Jesus. So if we look at it, whether you're going Old Testament, Old School, or you want to go New Testament, we are still His people because He chose us to be His people. When He picks you, therefore you should represent Him well. You should represent Him as His people. I promise you. Don't know, and it could happen, but more than likely, Jesus is not going to come to church service today. He could good. Not out of the realm of possibility except for the fact that he says he's going to come down call us up. So that has to happen first I believe. But but I'm not saying that's not. So if you're not, if they're not going to see Jesus definitely not going to look at God because we know with Moses, they'll tell you can't boom, you're going to die. So how do they see him? They see you. You're his people. So when we are going through the disasters that we're going through right now and all that's about to happen and all these what unknowing then we're about listen we're going to run through a disastrous october into an unknown november we have no listen we're on a roll here as american people we're on a roll we're going to get through october and boom boom november's going to come and we're going to be like oh what is so we're going to continue down this path so if they're not going to see anything else they're going to see you his people so when we're going through this disastrous time we need to be his people. One of my one of our church members and one of my teachers at school asked me the other day, what are we doing as a church or how can we help as a church? How do we do these things? And so I, when I'm asked a question, I pray about it and I go through. And I'm going to give you three things right now that we need to be doing as his people during this time. Whether it's the storms of October or the unknowing of November, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Three things. Be his people. First thing is pray to him. Thank you, Pastor Kimberly, for your scripture. Psalm 46, 1 and 3, 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Yea, we like he's here. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Kind of sounds like it's actually telling us this could happen. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake where they're surging. God is our refuge and strength. We need to pray to him. I don't understand why you don't go to the source of the strength when you need the strength. Right? Yes. I, 
I have a knee problem, so I'm going to go see my cardiologist. Not really good. I need to go to the one who's the expert. It's so amazing to us that insurance, you know, that's how they get you. You need an expert, so you've got to pay extra to see an expert or wait for it. I mean, those, these are things they're trying to hold us back. You go to an expert. You don't take your car when it's broken down to the drive through at Burger King and ask them to fix it. You go, and they're not even an expert at burgers, so you don't go there. You go to the expert. It doesn't make sense that we turn to others and people of this world when we need expert strength, we need expert refuge, we need expert wisdom. We need to turn to God. Kathy Lee Gifford this morning on Fox, I don't know if you watched her. She's got a new book and she couldn't stop praising God. And she says, I very rarely ever meet someone that says, I don't accept prayer. She said the other day she was at her gym and she was working out and a lady needed some, had some issues and troubles. She said, can I pray for you? And she goes, well, I don't really believe in God. She says, can I pray for you? And the lady went, sure. If other people go up to Steve and they're asking him to intercess and pray for, <laughs> get prayed over and prayed for, and they won't do it, listen, at least they know they're going to somebody that was going to help them through what they're dealing with. You're not always going to have somebody to turn to. So God said, let me make this intimate and personal. You don't have to go to a Sadducee, a Pharisee. You don't have to go to a temple. or uh, You don't have to bring a, a sacrifice. You don't have to wait till the feast. You can do this right now. You can just turn and talk to God. I talk to God a lot. Crazy stuff sometimes. You guess what? He created me and he knows me. So it's okay. I blame it on him if I say something stupid. I'm like, you did this. I, 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 I was going to say, I heard a vice president candidate says he says stupid stuff. So I don't know. But listen, I say crazy stuff sometimes to God. And he's okay with that. I'm mad at God sometimes. I scream at him. I give him advice. I, I'm pretty sure God has never taken my advice. He's hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's what you can do. When you get there, right? Literally, thank God you can take our advice. But he hears our prayers. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And he's ready to love you. So if you think you're not doing anything while you're not traveling up and you physically can't go to North Carolina or you can't go and lift streets, clean streets, or build something, you can be praying. When your power goes out, God has removed all the distractions. Kimberly and I, the other day, last storm, we had 20 hours without power. 20 is what Tico said, but I'll go with your math there, George. Straight from Tico. Okay. I, I love you. Go ahead and correct him now while you're doing that. I did. I did. Um, it throws me out right there. Right there. I thought there was not going to be any fact checking during this sermon. 20 hours without power, and I promise you, it was amazing how quiet the house was. We have, all of a sudden you don't realize that that fan, and that fan, and that fan, and that fan, and that air purifier makes all these, and you're like, it's just a dull hum when we walk in. When it goes out, it's kind of deafening how quiet it is. Then I hear Kimberly breathing, I'm like, stop breathing. <laughs> you're distracting me. And then George, I'm not even going to tell George stories. I could, but I'm going to be nice because I'm bad for Randy. Um, we have this opportunity. I am telling you, I am encouraging you to be praying right now. You need to be praying for what's going to happen. You need to be praying for those. You need to be praying for the first responders. We need to be praying to him. That's one thing you do as a believer in Jesus Christ. Second, in the middle of the storm, when we sing it all the time, you got to praise him. It says, I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Kind of goes along with the song we just sang. He delivered me from all my fears. When you're afraid, nine times out of ten, you want something or someone to get you through your fears. This week, Kimberly gave me a call, gave me a call at work. It's one of those, right in the middle of the day, it wasn't on our time. We have a time, 10.30, 10.40, we call. But this was off time. She called. I'm like, what's going on? 
She said, I think there's somebody shooting shotguns behind our, at the property behind our house. And we're thinking, well, they're either duck hunting or they're killing all the peacocks. But we, we, she said, I hear shotguns. Well, Rachel, don't celebrate the peacocks. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and she said, what do I do? I said, well, you can call the non-emergency line and tell them. Get home and she tells me this story. And I said, she was out on the lanai. Boom, shotgun. I said, at least you had Dauber there to protect me. Protect you. <laughs> no, he immediately went inside the house. <laughs> the dog was not going to help her through her fear. I told her where the loaded armament was. That might help you through your fear. But I can certainly tell you that God will always help you through your fear. Here's what he does. Samara, great prayer this morning. God is there no matter what you're going through. And he's steady. And he's firm. And he's faithful. And he's not going to waver. He's not afraid. He's not going to slip up. He's not going to be one of those ones that gets startled. He is there. And he is there to get you out of your isolation. By definition, I believe that fear is based upon isolating you from either what you know or what you understand. And at that moment when that fear comes in, I feel alone. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. I've never driven off a cliff before. I don't know how this works. As an aviator, I used to, Dave, I used to train all the time on what you do emergencies. I crashed many, many an aircraft in a simulator. I've even had aircrafts crashing in a simulator, stalling them out. And I said, I'm screaming at the machine going, I'm pulling up, but we're like straight up. We fall and crash and kills everybody. And the cockpit goes red. Killed lots of people in the cockpit. Make sure you hear all of that. That's one of those ones you, he said he kills lots of people. No, in a simulator, I kill lots of people. Kill lots of people. In an emergency situation, you're supposed to go to what you know, your rope memorization, get through the thing, and I would be sitting up there at 40,000 feet, 100 and something passengers in the back in our CRJ jet, and we're just flying along, and I'm sitting there, and we're going along, and next thing you know, I would realize, you know what would happen if like a wing fell off? No emergency procedure for that. I'd be screaming. I've thought about plummeting. Would I be that pilot like you see in the movies? Would I be just grabbing a hold and trying to pull it up with one wing? Nope. I mean, hands in the air, screaming like a little kid. Ah! What are you screaming about? We gonna die. <laughs> I've had moments where I stopped and said, I pray God gets me through that moment because I trust that he's there with me. I'm not telling you because you pray and you praise him that you're just going to feel overjoyed in the middle of whatever catastrophe or disaster you're going through. You're going to feel when Jesus said, and I just caught this in my head, when Jesus said to turn the other cheek, you felt the first slap. Your face still hurts and stings from that slap. But you've got to do something to turn around and be different than other people. You can hurt through loss. It's okay to hurt through loss. It's okay as a Christian to feel pain. It's okay to feel uh, hopeless at times, even though you have the hope of all creation behind you and the hope of Jesus Christ, you can feel those things, but you've got to trust in Him in those times. If you've never had something that you feared and you had to push through, you've got to do it. There's been times where it's been pitch black and you don't want to go forward, you don't want to walk into that place, but you just do it because you know that's what you've got to do. I hate to tell you this, but as Christians, you just got to trust God. Not asking to you, not asking you to sing a song. I'm asking you just to trust God. Third thing you do. This is where it gets to the physical side of it and the spiritual side and the emotional side and the mental side. You've got to provide because of Him. What I mean by that, give generously to them and do without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you. In all your work and everything in your hand, you put your hand to. That's Deuteronomy 15. If you go to Deuteronomy 15 and read the whole chapter, it's the year of Jubilee. We sing the song, Days of Elijah, and we sing the year of Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee is the year of forgiveness. Forgiving everybody's debt. Let me tell you this. It says, after you forgive them, there will still be some people that are hurting them. He says, 
after you have forgiven, after you've gone through all this, there's going to be another time where people are still hurting. And this is what you need to do. You need to give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. I promise you most churches right now we have an offering and we play, we play the organ. We're not. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I need you to provide during this whatever God tells you to provide. When I was asked what are we going to do, I'm like, what do you want to do? What do you, what do you feel led to do? We haven't done it in a while, but it was, it was um, Ariana's idea one time to cook the hot dogs and feed people. We did that. And then she started swimming. We don't have time. But she did that. It was her idea. I can remember a 10-year-old Nicholas. How old is Nicholas now? 28. 28 years. So he might have been about 11 or 12. When we're sitting there, we're like, how do we service the community? We want to have an outlet. We want to put up a tent and say, come to Hope Weaver. How are we going to help them? And little old Nicholas sitting over there just went, national statistics say most people don't have enough batteries in their house. And it would be good, nice to give them C-sized batteries because that's the one they don't buy as much. We're like, what? What are those kids talking about? We gave them little batteries with our little logo on it because that's what they need. Ask the Lord what you should do. If you ever come up with something you feel like the Lord's leading you, that's what we do. Kimberly and I have always gone with the ministry of this. We're not going to create something. We're going to go where God is moving. Say that again. That's good. We're not going to create something. We're not going to create a program or a process. We're going to go where God is moving. What that means is we shouldn't be the people who says, i got a great idea. I'm going to do it and then ask God to bless me on the end. You didn't even involve him in the planning and creation of your, pro your program? No. Right now is when, when you start with number one and start praying to God, you ask him, how can I help? Where's their need? I do believe, and I said it, and I'm not ashamed to say it on Facebook Live, I do believe like other people saying, you don't have to give the Red Cross. You don't have to give to FEMA. You can do it through Samaritan's Purse. There are other churches that are, that took gas to a church that was driving up to North Carolina. Didn't think about it because a week later he has to get gas cans. But there is the Lord. The Lord bless him. We'll do that. But listen. If somebody has a need, do what you feel God is calling you to do. And if you're not sure he's calling you, ask him. I am. Listen. I don't have all the answers. And when people come to me, what else shall I be doing? You should be giving to your pastor heavenly right now. A lot. Give a lot. Give a lot. No. Do what God has called you to do. Some people worry about just one. One can change a family, can change a friend. Kimberly hears the unction and the guidance of God all the time, and she tells me what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> Call so-and-so. Have you called him yet? It was three minutes ago. Can you give me a second here? <laughs> Next commercial break. Did you call him? No, you were sitting there. No, I didn't call him. And then you call and that person said, I'm glad you called. It was great to hear your voice. Listen, I'm not asking you to go out and build shelters for somebody. If the Lord leads you that way and calls you to do, Daryl can build the shelter. He can build everything. So he can do it. We got people that work on cars. We got medical experts. We got DJ that plays a tambourine and being able to beat there and back and whatever you're dealing with. Listen. Be whoever God calls you to be. Because you're not representing me. I, I have never worried about how you represent our church. Whoa. I've heard people in this town that, oh, you don't want them in your church because they'll be a black eye to your church. Okay, bring them in. We want everybody. I like black eye so it kind of works out. So listen. <laughs> if you are praying to God and praising Him through the storm, He's going to show you how you can help. And I can tell you, if you never make it out of your house to step three, step one and two, it's changing lives all over this world. <coughs> it changes your people around you. The way you deal with people at work, the way you deal with people at restaurants, the way you talk to the lady that called me last night, she's my claims adjuster. We have a little leak in our roof over the last storm. The lady's name is actually Donna Driggers, which is the same as the lady I worked with over here at Tomlin. And the lady, it was a five-minute insurance call. I was on the phone for 40, 30 to 45 minutes. She used to be a music teacher, and she left the music to it. And then she's lived in Texas, and she's, oh, and, and we just talked and talked and talked. And I just, I said, well, I hope you have a blessed day. That's very nice of you. I mean, George does it on every phone call. 
He can get like a scam person on him. God bless you. God bless you today. I mean, it doesn't matter. Do the things that God called you to do because you're representing him, not me. I'm going to be okay. I've had 18 years of pastoring. I've had plenty of people come. You know what your person in the church did? I ain't on me. They made that decision. I know well and all that all of you are not going to walk sin free until I see you again next Sunday. You're not. We're all sin. Shame on all of us. So all I ask you to do is do the things God's called you to do. I put this. We are God's people and we need to represent Him. This sermon can roll in through November. You don't need to represent a party or a politician. You need to represent him. You don't need to represent the east side or the west side, the north side, the south side. Your heritage, you need to represent him. Well, that's not, you need to represent him. Well, I don't think you need to rep well, you didn't represent the church. You didn't represent the denomination. You need to represent him. In all things. In the quiet moments when you're all by yourself, in those moments when you're out there in front of everyone. As a believer, people are watching you. What's our girl's name at school? The one that can't believe her own pastor. She thinks that's the funniest thing. Destiny. Destiny. Every day, she, she found out a couple weeks ago that I was a pastor. And she just, it just blew her mind. And she'll walk in and I'll say, bless you my sister or something. She'll like, she thinks that's the greatest thing. And then just to see how people, the positivity of Jesus Christ in your life. Can truly affect their family. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God of all creation, Jesus, Son of God, Holy Spirit, we ask you for your blessing today. We're all in different phases and stages of our lives as we sit here. Lord, you know each and every one in this room better than I ever will or anyone on this earth ever will. I ask your blessing over this family's life, the lives of the individuals. I pray that we represent you well in all things. Lord God, I pray as we get looking forward to whatever comes on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and 25 and 26 and 27 and all the things that we do, the places that we go, our jobs, our schools, going to our education, whatever it may be, Lord God. Bless us. Now I say that, Lord, with full understanding, with full faith and trust that you have already blessed each and every one of us. So as we ask, we also praise for you have blessed us by the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. You have blessed us by giving us your word. Not just a handshake, but your word. You have blessed us with the power and the unction and the authority of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord God, let us be about your business. Let us take care of one another. But may we also love and lead the loss to your Son, Jesus. We might not have the words, but God, you've already given them. You've already paid the price. So God, today, bless your people. Open the hearts, soften the hearts, open the ears to those who need to hear. Or I pray and ask it in God's name. Thanks.